Welcome to C News. I'm Sahiba Kakriya and today we have with us Dr. Ivory Lyons who has been associated with Christ University for the past eight years as guest faculty. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Uh, so let me begin the interview by asking you what made you come to India? I came to India in the first place in 2008 at, um, to okay. do my sabbatical here. Okay. And ever since then I've been coming almost every year, okay. uh, mainly to teach. Okay. Um, I've sometimes I've attended conferences and okay. I did guest lecturing. Okay. So, sir, this is your eighth visit to India. Yes. So, how has each visit been different for you? Each visit has been different because I see a different part of India. Okay. India is a land of many cultures and many different right. kinds of people and right. many different kinds of food. Right. Um, and so, each time I come, I get a little uh, better understanding, a right. little different flavor. Right. Of the of this vast um, country, and, right. and I enjoy it. I enjoy right. what I see, and I enjoy the challenges of learning about new things and right. visiting new places. Okay, and what are the other places that you visited in India apart from Bangalore? Okay, I visited Kerala. Okay. Um, I visited uh, Delhi. Okay. Um, uh, Jaipur, Agra, okay. um, uh, Mysore. Okay. And last year I went to um, the, the, the Vasa campus. All right. In Pune. Okay. So taking the conversation forward, so uh, you hold a degree in engineering. Yes. And uh, what made you switch to the profession of teaching? Wow, good question. Uh, my father was a college professor. Okay. And but I never thought I'd follow in his footsteps. Okay. Um, I was an engineer for ten years. Okay. I worked for a defense contractor, and okay. after. Going through that process, I began to, I found my real passion, okay. um, which wasn't doing what I was doing. I liked what I was right, doing. Right. And so I started on a road to um, get a more degrees okay. in order to teach. Right. And so in 93, I, the company I was working for, I left that right. and I enrolled in a PhD program in Claremont, California, okay. at Claremont Graduate University. Right. And in 1998, I, um, okay. I was awarded my PhD. Okay. All right. So, since you have been associated with Price University for long, so how has your experience been here? Uh, my experience in here has been very good. Um, um, the students have treated me very well. Right. Um, the, of course, the fathers have always been very generous with their, with right. their support. Um, everybody here has been pretty good to me. Um, right. Staff, faculty, everyone. I've right. had, I haven't had a time to be upset or angry Sure, some inconveniences every now and then, but right. it's been very, very good. Um, right. People, not only people pleasant, right. but they are kind when right. I'm when I'm dealing with them. Right. So, was it easy or difficult for you to adapt to the culture that we have in India? Um, no, it, it wasn't. Mm. One of the um, I grew up in the city, but my I used to visit my um, grandparents who lived in kind mm -hmm. of a rural area. Okay. And so, parts of that time right. reminding me of India right. and so well parts of India reminded me of that time right. and so adaptation wasn't wasn't so so bad okay. for me and before coming to India I had right. been to Africa three times okay. and so there are a lot of similarities there right. with culture right. with transportation right. with expectations so I, I right. had some of that before right. I came okay and so you've also been very closely associated with Buddhism yes so would you like to elaborate on the same um, Yes, I guess. Um, I found Buddhism to be a fascinating religion. Right. Um, in my graduate program, we are required to learn or take courses in religions outside of our own. Okay. And the one I chose was Buddhism. Right. And that initial course got me really excited about it. Right. And then um, later on, um, I had to actually teach it. Right. And when you teach it, or right. world religions, um, it, you learn a lot more about it. And exactly. I find some of the philosophy and some beliefs in Buddhism be consistent with my own. Okay. Even though um, I have different religious practices, right. I found some of the things that Buddhism talked about were right. things that I thought were pretty mm, like common sense and easy to understand. Right. And so um, I, I like that. I also visited temples. I like the temples that I visited. And I met some Buddhists. And I liked what I, what I saw. I like the things that I read about. Um, so a lot of the ways, Buddhism is one of the religions that I find easy to understand 
and it seems to make a lot of sense to me. Okay. So, uh, sir, you also taught uh, Dharma of the Star Wars yes. to MAMCS last year. Yes. So, what do you intend to introduce uh, to the students this year? Oh, good question. Um, when I knew I was coming and I figured that I couldn't teach the same course I taught last year with the Dharma of Star Wars Buddhism and Film, um, I thought that I would instead teach a course, a modified course that I had taught before. And that was a course where um, the students looked at theories of religion through the lenses of um, Star Trek. And so what, what we'll be doing this time, we'll be um, looking at some episodes of Star Trek. Star Trek is a very popular um, science fiction uh, TV series um, in the U.S. and using Star Trek to understand five theories of religion. Um, after each showing, the class will engage in a discussion, a conversation about a theory of religion that I will introduce to the class. And I'm looking forward to it because the class students um, usually get excited about that. And media students often, I find, appreciate different approaches to media than simply just entertainment. One of, whenever I mention that I'm showing science fiction, people have in their minds, oh, this is going to be entertaining. You're going to see a bunch of gadgets and, you know, all, all kinds of light shows and stuff. But a real good science fiction um, doesn't need to have all the gadgets, doesn't need all the special effects. Right. The good storyline is what will carry, and, it, and, and Star Trek is a perfect example of that. Right. Um, for those of you who understand uh, the, the, the camera work they do is very different, um, the way the actors get, go about the scripting is different, right. and all of that um, makes it, I think, a very good um, TV series, and I thought was a good way to help students understand some of these theories of religion. So, so since you have been teaching Buddhism for a while now, mm -hmm. how, uh, have you student, how, how have you seen students change and grow more? I've seen students change and grow more. One is they uh, become less fearful of what of Buddhism. There is a sense for some who are afraid because they think it's this other weird religion that's way over there. But when you explain it to them, it's more accessible to them. So they, they, they come with, with fearful. They also see how they can implement some of the Buddhist teachings in their own lives. Um, things uh, about uh, su suffering and about um, how to be good to other people. Um, things that not to be attached to, to different kinds of um, aspects of life. And so I've seen students grow like that. But I've also seen, seen students to, un, to actually grow deeper in their own um, religion, their own spirituality, because what they see is, well, if I can understand this about Buddhism, if Buddha says, says that, what, about, what does my religion say? So it helps them to make a better comparison of whatever particular faith that they're following. So, uh, so, how similar or different do you think our students here in India as compared to students abroad? Oh man, well, <laughs> I can, I can com I'll compare them with U.S. students. I haven't taught students from other parts of the country or the world as much as I've taught U.S. students. So, um, I find that there are a lot of similarities. There aren't too many differences. Um, the differences are cultural differences. Um, and people, Indian people, respect have a great respect for elders and great respect for teachers. Uh, American students do, but not quite the same extent, perhaps, as here. Um, but all the other parts of it, um, uh, when I would, <laughs> that's going to sound funny, I hope I don't, I don't want to insult anybody, but um, when, when I first came, uh, I would, when I thought of Indian students, I said, well, you know, they do well in their classes, they're serious about their studies, they turn all their work in on time, they come to class on time, they do the best that they can, they're well prepared. And when I would say that to the um, Indian faculty, they would <laughs> look at me and chuckle and say, are these the same people <laughs> talking about? And then when I would ask them what they thought about American students, they would say, well, because American students have to pay for their education, they are on time in their classes, they, you know, they do their assignments and all of that stuff, and I will say, you're talking about the same students. So the, I don't find a great difference. There are some differences, but not a great difference as I, as I had expected. But I think the other side is true as well. Um, so I find the, the differences, 
Indian students have problems like American students have. Um, they have teachers they like, they have courses they don't like, they, they turn their assignments in, you know, when they're supposed to turn in, some do, some don't. Some are good students, some are not so good students. Um, so there isn't a big difference between uh, the two. Although I will say that um, I think American students perhaps have more options when they go to school. Whereas for most Indian students, their parents expect them to go to college and to go to a particular school or go to some schools. Whereas in American students, um, st students have more choices and, it, and so they may decide not to go to school, to decide to work or to do something else or to delay, um, delay going into college. So you mentioned Indian culture. Yes. So what is your opinion of Indian culture, its people, wow. and the food that you have here? Oh, so we only have how many minutes <laughs> to do this? Um, my opinion is, first of all, India is a land of cultures, not just one culture. Most Americans, most people, I think, think of India as um, one homogeneous place, and it's not. You have, you have 28, 29 uh, official, official languages, I believe, uh, and hundreds of languages people speak, different ways of speaking, different ways of clothing that you wear, different food, um, all of that stuff, different dances, different religions, and you somehow make it all work. So my opinion of them is, is that it's the land of cultures um, and that one should try to experience much as, as you feel comfortable with, although you should try to also work out of your comfort zone. Um, I think that it's very, I like the old mixed with the new. You know, Indians adapt to some new things that are going on, but they also have a way of preserving some of the old things. So when I visit the temple, the, some of the Hindu temples, or when I, the Jain temples, uh, very old structures, and I see that some of them are you know, cared for and still people are practicing them. And then you see a new structure right beside or next to that. So it's a bit old and new. So I have a, a great respect for Indian cultures. I have um, admiration, I guess, for traditions that you've been able to maintain them. And I hope to learn more. Lastly, sir, what is the message that you would like to give the students who are beginning the term this year? Wow. Um, I'd like to tell the students to, to dream big, to uh, try to live a life um, of some integrity, and to believe in themselves, and to believe in a power higher than themselves All right. as they're getting started in their education. Okay. Well, thank you so much, sir, for having spared your valuable time and for having such an insightful interaction. You're welcome. Thank you so much, sir. This is Cyber Kakriya for C News. Stay tuned to C News for more updates next week. Thank you.